including it's involved well-known figures from royalty, film and politics. It's put people in jail and forced resignations at the heart of government. And it's not over yet. This Labour MP says there's evidence he was targeted, but he's angry the police have done nothing about it. Well, I'd like the police to do the proper investigation that they've never got round to, but since they seem very reluctant to do that, I hope that the, the courts will force the police to reveal all the information they have to all the um, people who might have had their telephones hacked, uh, many of whom have absolutely no idea that, anything, uh, that, they, that they were involved at all. So how did it work? A hacker could call a mobile phone's voicemail and then he'd be asked for a security code. If that code hadn't been reset, it might be very basic and easy to guess. Or the hacker could call the phone company and pretend to have forgotten his own code. Either way, the hacker could get access to the target's voicemail. Simple but illegal. Well, the more it goes on, it's, um, it was a widespread Fleet Street practice of tabloid hacks, tabloid journalists. From the 2000 period, slightly earlier possibly, it was very easy, very lazy journalism to be able to listen into people's voicemails. Andy Coulson had to quit as the Prime Minister's Head of Communications because of this scandal. Another former editor of the News of the World says there isn't enough evidence for the police to take this further. What the police seem to have is an awful lot of telephone numbers, some PIN numbers, absolutely no evidence that they were acted upon. We've had two or three cases where people have got evidence of, of uh, things being acted upon and they're taking civil action. But many whose names have been attached to this scandal are still waiting to see just what is the real truth? So, Andy, how likely is it there'll be a new investigation?